Hi, I'm Chris from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to install a multi-piece headliner in a 1956 Beetle. Now the multi-piece headliner started back in the split window era and went up to about 1963. And then after 63, from 64 on, the, uh, the pieces came down and they kind of condensed in more to a one-piece headliner. Uh, and I'll show you the differences there, but um, uh, basically you're going to be working with either an eight or nine-piece headliner, whether it's tweed or cloth or vinyl. Uh, 63 was the year where they went to vinyl and had the multi-piece. 64 is when they went to a more of a, a one-piece headliner, uh, but stayed vinyl throughout, through, uh, through the end of the, the Beetle years. Um, but the uh, mohair cloth or the vintage cloth headliners were what was available from 62 and earlier. So we're going to be working with one of those and uh, I'm going to show you the differences now and, uh, and uh, eventually how we put it in. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be working on a uh, multi-piece headliner with cloth, this vintage cloth. It's like a gray cloth. Uh, you can get this from either SoFine in Texas or you can get it from um, WolfsburgWest.com. They sell this type of, uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like a mohair, but it kind of feels like polyester in a way. So uh, that's kind of what's available. They run about 200 bucks. Uh, or you can go with... Uh, tweed cloth, which is what I really like. It's more of a woven material. I really enjoy this stuff. It looks vintage. I know it wasn't original to the Beatles, but it's very durable. Uh, it's very forgiving. So if you did mess up, this, this material is very good to hide some mistakes. Uh, they have these in different colors. SoFine has these with, this is a bone tweed, or you have an oatmeal tweed. They also have a beige tweed. They have a, uh, SoFine in Texas has a wide variety of tweed colors. Um, also with the vintage cloth you can either get this in beige uh, or the gray or they also have it in like a bone white as well. Lenny from West Coast Classic Restorations out in California sells a headliner. This is more of like a wool. Uh, a little more expensive. You're probably looking at around $400, $500 to get this headliner. So um, you know you can, if you want to be absolutely period correct, this is something you might want to consider. Uh, but you can get away with the, uh, the vintage cloth either from SoFine. Uh, or Wolfsburg West. Um, and like I said, it's more of like an eight or nine piece headliner. TMI also makes uh, mohair or cloth. And, um, you know, depending on, again, which company you go with, TMI will usually give you like a nine piece. Uh, Wolfsburg West and, and SoFine will give you like a uh, more of an eight piece headliner. But uh, this is basically the materials that you'll be able to get. Now, keep in mind, they stuff this in the boxes when they're getting shipped. Uh, so when you get this in, a lot of times it's all wrinkled. So you might want to get an iron uh, when, it, when it comes down to it uh, to finally iron out some of these wrinkles to put it in. But what we're going to do is we're also going to use a hair dryer inside to soften up the material, to give it a little more stretch, you know, a little more pliability, you know, just to get it in there better. So um, now also what, one thing to consider on the 50s bugs, um, you're supposed to match the door pillars uh, the door posts and the under the quarter windows are usually supposed to match the seat upholstery in some way. So what we're doing is we have a blue vinyl seat upholstery going into this car. Um, now, as an option, usually when you go through either Lenny from West Coast Classics, if you get the seat material from him, he's going to give you the door posts and the under the quarter windows in the color of the seat upholstery, and that usually goes with uh, the car to make it correct. Um, but if you're not going with that route, don't be, you know, afraid because at least in the kit they'll give you the, the door posts and under quarter windows anyway uh, as part of the cloth material. But just to keep in mind, if you want to be period correct, up until about 58, 59, uh, they went with, like if you had red seats in your car or blue seats, the under the quarter windows and door posts would be the color of the seat. So you might want to consider uh, getting that. So fine, will actually make these for you if you wanted them as an extra, uh, extra option. So. Um, all right, so let's get on to the padding. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to pad up our headliner. Now, we already somewhat, you know, gutted that car already that we're working on. And I have videos on YouTube on how to take the seats out, how to take your headliner out, how to strip your car down, uh, how to even take the windows out. So you can check that on my website or on my YouTube channel, um, you know, how to, how to remove all this stuff from the car. But we're going to just jump right in. Uh, but what, we, what I like to do is I like to repad up into my headliner on the pillars and whatnot, you know, to give the headliner more of a posh look and it's also a good sound deadener. Um, this stuff I used to get from Home Depot. It's made by a company called Armstrong. 
Um, it's more like a, it's like a felt underlayment padding material, I guess they would use for carpet. It's like a uh, quarter of an inch in thickness. I kind of peel off this plastic backing and it's, it's got a lot of nice stretch to it. Cut it to size and uh, start padding up my pillars and whatnot. But if you can't get it from uh, Home Depot, you can try to find a carpet supply store nearby or you can go to a, uh, a textile manufacturer who does cloths and, uh, and rugs and whatnot, and they might actually sell foam. That's maybe in this thickness you might want to use. Uh, to make it easier for you, jbugs.com, SoFine, uh, even Mid-America Motor Works will actually sell a headliner pad kit already cut to size for you. All you got to do is just install it. But if you want to just save a few bucks, uh, you would you buy just some of your own material. This usually goes like up on the pillars, like I said, or you get this stuff, which is about half inch thick. This is a real thick jute padding material. We also use this to cover our seats sometimes. Uh, this goes up into the roof area. This is the thicker air, uh, piece that you're gonna wanna use for your, your roof. Like I said, if you can't find this stuff, there's kits out there that you can purchase. I think they're like $40, $50, maybe $60, and they give you the, cut, the pieces already pre-cut. Uh, I just buy this stuff in bulk because we're always working on these cars. So um, if you can't find that, uh, AutoZone sells a roll of carpet. This is like a nappy carpet, um, shag hair maybe they would call it. Um, it's a little bit thinner, maybe it's an eighth inch thick. Ten bucks a roll. You can use this actually to pad up the headliner as well if you did want to use that. Here's some of the tools I got laid out here on the table uh, that I'm going to show you what we're going to need and what you can, be, you can pick up uh, from your local hardware store or even your dollar store. Um, a pair of scissors, of course. You're going to want a good set of those. Um, I like this razor. You're going to need a whole box of these razors. You're going to go through these a lot because they get dull real fast. But I like this razor because it just flips open. You take the blade out. You can put it right back in. Real simple. Instead of unscrewing it like some of the other blades that are uh, handles that are out there. You buy this pack. There's a, there's a few hundred of them in here. So you're going to need those. Uh, of course, a pair of pliers can come in handy. Uh, general hammer. A rubber mallet you're going to want, um, and then these high impact plastic tools that are used to remove body molding, door panels, things like that. This curve is great uh, to put the headliners in behind the pillars. You're going to want to use something like this to get the headliner in. VW actually used a tool very similar to this to put their headliners in. You're going to want a good respirator. I don't know if you can see that, Jackie. Uh, either something like this or a paper. Uh, mask at least to put on. Be in a well ventilated area because you're just not going to want to breathe this stuff in. I mean we're in a nice garage here so you know the air at least circulates well. But if you're in a small confined place you know the glue smell could actually get to you. The glue that I like to use is this 3M High Strength 90. Um, not cheap. It's like $12, $13 a can. You can, maybe you could find it on eBay uh, for a little bit cheaper. The reason I like this glue is because it has this type of a nozzle to it and there's a high, low, and medium setting on here so I can turn the nozzle and it, you know, the stream comes out from weak to strong and depending on where you are is, is how much you know, pressure you're going to want and the good thing, uh, what I like about this nozzle is because it comes out more of like silly string, it doesn't come out in a fine spray that you would get out of a nozzle like this which the problem with the, the misty spray is that it gets all over the car and you're not going to want that, you know, because then it gets to be a pain in the butt to take the glue off the body. If you do get glue on the body, WD-40 with a good microfiber cloth can actually take the glue off the car. Uh, just don't let it set up too, too long. It'll just The longer it sets up, the longer, the harder it's going to be to take the, the glue off. Uh, AutoZone also sells this Permatex uh, heavy-duty uh, glue. This is actually pretty good, too. It has the nozzle that I don't like on it, but actually comes out like the silly string. So this is not a bad nozzle, um, but I still think the best one is this 3M90 that you can get at AutoZone. So you want to definitely pick those up. Um, for a headliner, you might need three or, three or four. If you're doing carpet as well, maybe five cans. Here's a heat gun to warm up the stuff, uh, the headliner, to at least make it softer. If you're using vinyl, you're definitely going to want to use this. You know, keep in mind vinyl is a cheaper material to, to put into the, the earlier cars, but it's a little more difficult to work with because you've got to soften it up and there's a lot of wrinkles that come out with vinyl. So you, you're going to want to be careful. If you don't have a heat gun, you can just use a regular hair dryer and that's fine too. And the other thing is too, uh, your hands. 
you're going to want to keep your hands clean while you're doing this because you are working with new material. So sometimes you might want to keep baby wipes on, you know, on standby here when your hands get dirty. Uh, so make sure you keep your hands clean while you're working on this. And as you're working on your headliner, don't work on anything else but your headliner or interior upholstery. Because uh, anytime you doing other mechanical works or trying to clean up any other part of the car during your restoration, your hands are going to get dirty. So if, you, if you're working on interior, working on headliner, just concentrate on that and don't do really anything else. Also, you're going to need some of these. These are regular like, I don't know, what do they call these? Like notepad clips or kind of like an advanced uh, paper clip in a way. These are strong clips that we're going to need to use for definitely for the back window because the back window can be a pain in the butt to put in and in these earlier bugs it's a one piece uh, uh, seam back there there are no overlaps or, or anything like that so it's a little difficult uh, to get the headliner in back there so you're going to need these clips um, and then you can pick these up from any uh, stationary store staples or office max or something so all right that's about it uh, let's start going over to the car and i'll explain what we're going to get into with the padding you know, we already started gutting this car and you know, what you're going to want to do is to gut the car, like I said, I got videos online you can see, but to take the windows out first, I usually like to just use a razor. You just cut the old seal out with the razor and that'll pop out. Uh, quarter windows do the same thing uh, and, and along with the front windshield. If you want to save the old seals, there is a way uh, to, to push the old seal out. You just kind of, you know, pull it away from the body a little bit and gently start pushing it out. The front windshield could be a little more problematic with that because you can jeopardize cracking the front windshield. So I usually, whenever I'm doing a restoration, I know I'm going to just get new seals and new chrome to go in those. So I'll just cut the old seal out. Um, and then you, as you can see, we started uh, pulling away some of the old uh, padding that VW always put on these cars. Um, they always had it around the back window area. Like you can see here, it's kind of kind of like felty, it's kind of mohair-ish, um, I don't know, jute material that they have. Um, I usually like to take that all off and just clean it all out. Usually get yourself like a wire brush and you just start taking this off and that'll start coming off. You just want a nice and clean, a nice clean surface. You also had it on the pillars up over here and overhead here. Um, their padding usually started from back here around the grippers and then came all the way up to about here. That's usually where they stopped. I usually like to go a little bit further to the front over the doorway just to keep the padding more uniform. Um, they always stop there, but I'm going to do a little more. And they also do a little bit under, or just above the, the window, and they put some padding back here. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to do all that, where to put it and stuff. But um, as you have the everything taken out, the next thing you to want to do is the old assist straps that you could eventually put back after the headliner's put in, you know, these, most bugs all have the, these little hooks that, you know, go over the assist strap and it's a coat hook and they usually had them up, you know, either over here or over here uh, and you should still save the old screw and what you're going to want to do is put that old screw back into where the hooks go so then when you have the headliner in, now you can feel around for the screw and then eventually cut the headliner material away so then you can get the screw out and then you can be able to get these in. If you don't, it's tough to find the holes in there. Um, same thing with uh, the, the later style, the 60s headliners. They started putting these, like I said to you, these big, I don't know, they're, they're big fasteners that went in to hold the headliner in place. Why they did it, I really don't know. But they usually had them over here in the back. Uh, so usually I put those in as well. So just then event afterwards you can uh, feel around for it, cut away the material and then put this in. Um, and then the other thing is too, if you're going to put pop-out windows in, later model bugs in the 60s already had the pre-drilled holes for the pop-out windows. Again, put the screws in the back area here behind the quarter windows so you can uh, feel around for it to get it out, to get them out eventually so you can then put the windows in. Um, and that's, that's really it. What we're going to start doing now is uh, I'm going to disconnect the dome light, take off some more of this uh, old padding, and then we're going to start repadding uh, the car up. Okay. Here's another spot back here that's pretty common on the early bugs. Um, there's a hook that goes right here. And what this does is this holds the backrest uh, in place so it doesn't fall forward. Um, uh, when you're doing the backrest on the back seat, just make sure 
there's a hole on the, the frame there that has a screw on it to hold the strap in. But what we're going to do is just to make sure we can put this back in later, again, leave the screw in the body there so you can feel around for it and then make sure it's, uh, I'm actually going to back off a little bit so I can feel it a little bit better. There we go. You can feel that lump, cut the material, then take that screw out, and then you'll be able to put this right back in. All right, so I'm just going to start scrubbing some of this old patting material off. I just wanted to show you what we do. We usually like to take all this stuff off. Just use your wire brush. All right, so what we're going to start to do now is start to move the old grippers away. Here's some grippers that hold part of the headliner in. And again, we're working on a multi-piece headliner. So there's different sections of this headliner that, you know, have different tucks and different positions. Um, so like I said, there's one back piece area here that goes on the back window. And then there's another section where a strip goes in here to go up over the pillars and behind the rear quarter window. But what you're going to want to do is open up these grippers because you got to slip in uh, a plastic strip that's sewn to the material into these grippers to hold it into place. So we're going to start just regular pair of pliers. Sometimes you might need a screwdriver. You just want to open them up just a little bit. Whoop. Okay. Open these up. Okay. Okay. Here's the wind lace area here that holds in your door post. Uh, and this is the first area we're going to install the headliner. Uh, you're going to want to open these grippers up a little more, get these teeth open a little more, get, use a tool like this, or like the impact tool I was telling you about with the hook on it. Uh, it's got a flat edge, kind of like a putty blade. And you want to just start prying open the teeth. Okay, just give it a nice gap in here so you can slip that wind lace in. Now, to remove the old one, like we did uh, earlier before the, the video, um, you would do the same thing. You would just get in here, open these grippers, and then just pull the old wind lace out. And then uh, you should have no problem. Just pull it down from top to bottom, it should pull right out. Um, now, as you notice, as we go down to the bottom here of this uh, area, you'll see that the grippers on this car have rusted away earlier on, and the old grippers came off. Grippers should actually come down to the bottom here to hold the whole wind lace. So we're going to have to improvise here, either using some self-tapper screws or some nails, uh, you know, small nails that can hold the lace in. Uh, earlier bugs, you might be finding that these grippers are rotting away, so you have to kind of improvise there. But uh, for the most part, they usually stay on the cars. So um, start opening these grippers now to, so you can get your wind lace ready. Here's the other set of grippers over the doorway that you're going to want to have these opened as well for the headliner to tuck into. This one's, these are a lot easier to, to, to get done. Like I said, you just use your tool here. You can just kind of squeeze it in there and just kind of pry them open. You just want to be able to get that headliner in a lot easier this way. Um, let's get on to the padding here. I'm going to start cutting some strips here for the door post. I'll show you how to make some good door post uh, material to make the post look nice and posh. And we're going to put these up in the pillars in the back window. So basically I just get my razor. Make sure you get new razors. These, like I said, they go all the time. So I start cutting some strips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a strip, I don't know, say, I don't know, three inches, four inches, something like that. And just kind of cut it straight down. Okay, so now you got your, that's one pillar, so now I just usually take the back, the plastic off, you might not have this plastic, but, um, and again, another thing too, keep in mind, patience with this, now we're going to start putting the headliner in, just be patient with this, take, take your time, you know, they used to do this 15 minutes in the factory, but you know what, uh, now that we have 
limited tools as compared to what they used to have. You know, it might take you a day or two to put this whole headliner together, maybe even more. So. Again, you might have the kit that's already pre-cut, so then you're in good luck, uh, in good shape rather. Um, but just remember, some of those kits don't have the back window piece, so you might still have to use, you know, to, to, to cut this. Okay. We'll see what I'm doing in a minute once we start putting this together. Do one more strip. Okay, so those are for the pillars. You see, I cut four strips here for the pillars, and I'll show you what I mean afterwards. But um, now for the door posts. Well, I hope we have enough here. I think we should. Let me do the back window piece. Actually, back window was about uh, 20 inches or so. Uh, I think we're okay there. So this has some stretch to it. So even if you're running a little short, you can always stretch it out a little bit. So. Okay, this will be for the back window. You'll see what I'm gonna do there. And then I'm gonna cut this piece in half. And this will be for the door posts. So like I said, these are about three, four inches. Let me see exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, oh, actually I'm a little off, <laughs> sorry. About four to five and a half inches, something like that. You wanna cut strips like that. That thickness, it could be, some could be a little bit thinner. Uh, this is four inches, so yeah, anything between four and five inches, you should be okay in thickness. You're gonna trim this anyway, so you don't have to be so precise. I'm gonna start by making my uh, door posts. There's not much out there as far as people making door posts. I actually have a video on it on YouTube already, but I'm gonna show you here anyway. Um, here's our like four to five inch strip of the felt padding, which is again like a quarter inch in thickness. And what I do is I just get some of my spray glue. And you want our door post to look nice and posh when, they're, when the, the material's laid around it. So the best thing I think I like to do is just kind of spray this up here. Now you don't have to rush. It's not like this glue dries very quickly. Um, it's actually, this stuff glues better when it's tacky instead of wet. So, and then basically what I do, I just start rolling the material. If you can see that. It'll grab. Just go slow. Again, patience with this. There's no rush. You want this to come out right. You rush, that's when you screw it up and it looks like crap. <laughs> Right. Doesn't have to look that pretty. It's just as long as it's kind of rolled, this is going to go in the door post area. If you have some foam, foam is okay. The only problem with foam is that you have more square edges. You want this to be a rounded look. You don't want any harsh edges popping through the, uh, you know, poking out from the, the, the headliner. All right, so that's that. I think this in general is about. Uh, 36 inches. So as long as it's 36 inches in length, that will basically cover your door post area from top to bottom. Okay. Um.